Listen, I know it's not Mother's Day, but when it comes to moms and mothers, bro, I want to give the utmost love and respect, right? And today, we're speaking on one mother in particular, and that's Mother Nature. And when it comes to Mother Nature, bro, I don't have nothing but respect and nice things to say, because that's one you do not want to make mad, all right, at all. So today in this amazing video, man, we're going to check out one in a million moments in Mother Nature. So if you're new, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Let's check it out. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19, the Kelvin Helmholtz wave cloud. This is an incredibly uncommon occurrence in which a cloud creates a billowing wave pattern. They happen when two airstreams experience a substantial vertical shear, which causes winds to blow more quickly at higher elevations than lower ones. One of the most remarkable and uncommon forms of clouds, Kelvin Helholms resemble evenly spaced rolling ocean waves. They happen when the velocities of two separate air layers in our atmosphere mix, a phenomenon known as a shear. The top of an existing cloud layer may be scooped into these wave-like rolling formations when the upper layer of air is moving more quickly than the bottom layer of air. A scientific phenomenon known as Kelvin Helmholtz instability is not just related to clouds. Anywhere there's a velocity differential across a fluid contact, it can happen. The most prominent illustration is wind blowing over water, where the waves are caused by the faster moving air on the slower moving water. On windy days, the clouds are more likely to appear. They frequently serve as reliable turbulence indications while flying. The atmospheres of planets and moons, such as the red spot on Jupiter or the Earth's clouds, as well as the atmospheres of the Sun and other other stars exhibit Kelvin Helmholtz sensibilities. Number 18. Okay, I'm glad I saw this video. Imagine not seeing this video and then walking outside and seeing those clouds. Out of panic, bro. They had to give me one of them brown paper blacks. <laughs> Blowing it out, bro. Like, you could have told me something like catastrophic wasn't about to happen. Zhongjiajie Pillars, China. Tianzi Mountain's tower-like peaks rise abruptly from the plain below, which is covered with trees and typically shrouded in mist, providing a distinctive view. One of the most remarkable formations in the world is found in the 21 square mile Wu Lin Yuan scenic area of Zhangjiajie National Forest in Hunan Province, China. It makes sense that James Cameron used Tianzi Mountains as the model for the fictional planet Pandora in Avatar. The result of sedentary rock erosion over millions of years is Tianzi Mountain. The ancient sandstone peaks, which date back 300 million years, have been carved out by wind and water. What's left are dilapidated buildings that resemble skyscrapers more than cityscapes. Separate strata with different colorations and features have formed as a consequence of erosion, and have changed through time as a result of exposure to the environment. Younger and less damaged mountains are scattered across the remainder of Zhangjiajie National Forest Park, adding to the area's unique variety of mountain formations. Tianzi Mountain is one of the most breathtakingly gorgeous places on Earth, regardless of what we call it or its origins. Number 17. Fairy Chimneys, Turkey. Magic might appear to be real on the high plateau of central Anatolia in Turkey. What other force except magic could sculpt rock and stone into spindly stalks that emerge from the ground like mushrooms? How could geology possibly explain such a bizarre occurrence? The cluster of spires look like a scene from a Salvador Dali nightmare. Even the names of these structures, fairy chimneys, conjures up a paranormal feeling. However, magic doesn't exist. Bad news. The geologic process that led to the chimneys began millions of years ago, when volcanic eruptions spread ash throughout the area that's now Turkey. This ash solidified into the porous rock known as tuff, which was then covered by a layer of basalt. The slow process of erosion finally started. The softer tuff eroded away over millennia, making space for the pillars which may reach heights of 130 feet. Each one's covered with a protective mushroom-shaped cap because the tougher basalt erodes more slowly. Without the use of pixie dust, a fairy chimney is created in an instant. 
That doesn't mean the chimneys aren't magical, though. The events behind these formations and the creative ways people have used them for ages are tales fit for a fairy tale. The chimneys are situated in an area formerly called Cappadocia, which crossed the ancient Silk Road trade route. A who's who of European empire builders ravaged and invaded the region for centuries. At various points in history, the territory has been claimed by the Hittites, the Persians, Alexander the Great, the Romans, the Byzantines, and the Ottomans. Number 16. Boiling Lake The name of this body of water, Boiling Lake, may give you a hint as to some of its dangers. Fans of hot springs will be unhappy to find out that this lake, which is located on the Caribbean island of the Dominica, is officially off-limits to tourists. I mean, as it should, the name of the lake is Boiling Lake. <laughs> Doesn't sound inviting to me. No, eventually, is official we know how what's gonna happen off limits to tourists however considering that we mean very hot when we say this is a hot spring it's not necessarily a negative thing the borders of the lake alone have been recorded to be 200 degrees fahrenheit while the center of the lake is clearly boiling and considerably hotter the bubbling water has a blue-gray color and is typically shrouded by a cloud of steam. All of this is caused by the lake laying atop a volcano, which causes heated lava underneath to immediately release heat and gases into the lake. A hiking trip went horribly wrong in the year 1900 and involved three hikers who fell into the boiling water below. That's what I was about to say. Why would you even risk it? How many times have you seen people accidentally fall into a pool? You've seen it all throughout your life, right? So why even go close enough to where you could accidentally fall? Like, no, don't know. Really wrong in the year 1900 and involved three hikers who fell into the boiling water below after being overpowered by a sudden huge lake gas discharge. For them, it was a watery grave. Since then, the Dominican Republic has prohibited any walks, but if you're willing to take a chance, the route still remains. Once you pass the boiling lake, you'll arrive in a location known as the Valley of Desolation, which looks even more enjoyable than the lake. Number 15. Chocolate Hills, Philippines because of its distinctive and beautiful features, Chocolate Hills in Bohol is a well-known tourist destination in the Philippines. There are about a thousand conical and dome-shaped mounds that are symmetrical and resemble Hershey's Kisses. The moniker Chocolate Hills refers to their color rather than their chocolate content. The hills seem smooth and lush because of the grass that grows on them during the rainy season. They derive their name from the dying foliage that takes on a chocolate brown hue in the summer. The Chocolate Hills are said to have blossomed where a weeping giant's tears fell after being let down by love, according to folklore. Another legend describes two giants engaged in a day-long stone-throwing conflict. The mounds where the stone had fallen remained, and the giants came to an accord. This is what science has to say on the origin of the Chocolate Hills. According to geologists, weather slicing coastal limestone on a top layer of clay is how the hills were created. Mm. Number 14. Underwater Waterfall, Mauritius. If you've ever heard of this island, it's mostly recognized for having been the birthplace of the now extinct dodo bird. More recently, Mauritius shocked the globe by undercovering the long lost landmass of Mauritius beneath it. It's returned with yet another unique characteristic a waterfall beneath the surface. Just to be clear, it's an optical illusion that can only be viewed from above and isn't a real waterfall. The occurrence occurs in the turquoise lagoon on the southwest shore of the island known as Le Morne Peninsula. The ability to look through the water, made possible by its immaculate clarity, is key to solving the enigma. In reality, the sand and silt sediments are always moving and are the ones that are misleadingly dropping into the unknown. Being a young island, Mauritius is situated on an ocean shelf that's elevated above the seafloor. A gentle slope that abruptly ends in a 4,000 meter deep abysmal plunge may be seen off this specific shore. Due to the flow of sand and silt deposits along these slopes, the marine topography makes varied colors of blue apparent. This particular- Like, look at that, bro. Beautiful, but yet a pinch of deadly <laughs> at the same time. Like, it's awesome that it's able to achieve both things in one. The particular balance of colors is what gives rise to the optical illusion that it's attracted so many fans throughout the globe. Number 13, Frost Flowers. Frost flowers are tiny layers of ice that, among other things, protrude from the openings in the stems of whiter yellow wingstem plants. These coatings of ice may be little thicker than a credit card, 
They can only occur in conditions of freezing air temperature, damp or wet but not frozen solid, and previously unfrozen plant stems. Capillary motion causes the water in the plant stem to be pulled from the ground upward. As it freezes, it swells, splitting the stem vertically as it freezes upon coming into touch with the air. A paper-thin sheet of ice extends further from the stem as more water is absorbed from the earth via the break. The frost flower is either a thin or wide ribbon of ice, depending on how long the split is. It forms unpredictable curls when it's extruded, possibly as a result of the uneven friction lines along the split sides. These flowers are delicate and only persist until they sublimate or melt. No two are exactly the same. Look for tall weeds, especially in areas that aren't often mowed to locate them. They appear to like the same environment as wing stems, blackberries, and purple ironweed. Number 12. Glowing Horsetail Yosemite In Yosemite Valley, horsetail falls run over El Captain's eastern face. Usually only flowing in the winter, this little waterfall is simple to overlook. It can occasionally grow orange in the middle to the end of February, when the sun is setting behind it. Only on clear nights with a running waterfall do you see this special lighting phenomenon. Even a slight haze or cloudiness can significantly reduce or completely erase the impact. The phenomenon is similar to the historically occurring firefall from the glacier point, despite being wholly natural. Granite rocks and the remains of earlier rocks are the defining features of the geology of the Yosemite region. This Imagine how many people thought, oh, you know, it might be some gold up there. Sierra Nevada was raised and inclined around 10 million years ago to create its distinctive slopes, which enhanced the steepness of stream and riverbeds and led to the construction of deep, narrow canyons. A million years ago, glaciers began to develop at higher elevations. As they melted and drifted downslope, they carved and sculpted the U-shaped valley that's now so popular with tourists for its breathtaking views. European settlers first came across the Yosemite Valley in 1851. Although James D. Savage is credited for finding the region that's today known as Yosemite National Park, there are earlier occurrences of other people accessing the valley. Yosemite Valley and the surrounding area had been inhabited for about 4,000 years, despite claims made by Savage. However, people probably first visited the area 8,000 to 10,000 years ago. Number 11. The Unusual Bottle Tree of Queensland, Australia. The Queensland bottle is a rare deciduous tree with a distinctive bottle-shaped trunk that gets stronger with age, like a boa tree. Large seed pods are produced along with little blooms by this plant. The hardy tree blooms in the late spring. It was found and named by Sir Thomas Mitchell and John Lindley in 1848. Its bulbous trunk, which may measure 3.5 meters in diameter at breast height, gave rise to its name. The Queensland bottle tree, which may grow to a height of 10 to 25 meters, sheds its leaves from September to December, with one or more slender leaf blades measuring up to 11 centimeters long and 2 centimeters wide. The leaves can be simple or split. From September to November, cream-colored flowers bloom, and from November to May, woody boat-shaped follicles mature. There are no recognized subspecies. Wow. Number 10. Lake Balkhash. Lake Balkhash in Kazakhstan has the uncommon distinction of being a freshwater and saltwater lake. Most of the freshwater is located in its western half, which is broad, shallow, and milky green in color. Its eastern side, which is more salted, is narrower, deeper, and dark blue. The lake water sources can account for its peculiar mm. quality. The Illy River, which is the principal source of water, empties into the lake on the southwest side, causing a steady flow from west to east. The lake does not, however, have an exit, and when water gathers and evaporates on the eastern side, it loses salt. Some of the water from the Eli River has been diverted for irrigation and hydroelectric dam construction, and some analysis foresee a future environmental catastrophe. Analogous to the aerial sea as a result of these diversions. Balkash is located in the largest and deepest portion of the huge Balkash Alakal Depression. Number 9. Full Circle Rainbow. Full circles can form a rainbow. However, the average viewer only perceives an arc that's centered on a line from the sun to the observer's eye and is made up of lighted droplets that are above the ground. Our visual reference point is the main determination of how much of a rainbow we perceive. Most of the time we only see a portion of the circle, which is the recognizable rainbow arc. However, a complete circle rainbow may be seen in all its beauty if you're fortunate enough to be at the right place at the right moment. As the oh, another thing they lied to us about. The sun moves closer to the horizon, more of a rainbow may be seen since its center is exactly opposite to the sun's location in the sky. 
As a result, dawn and sunset are often when you'll see a rainbow with the highest proportion. Numerous myths feature rainbows, and they've been incorporated into artistic works. A rainbow initially appears in writing in the book of Genesis chapter 9 as a part of the Noah flood myth, where it serves as a reminder of God's promise never again to wipe out all life on earth with a catastrophic flood. How kind. Bifrost, a rainbow bridge, connects the land of mortals, known as Midgard, with the realm of the gods in Norse mythology, aka Asgard. The Muisca people of modern-day Colombia worshipped Chucavera, the rainbow god, and sent him gifts of gold, snails, and tiny emeralds to thank him for ending the frequent rains in the Bogota savanna. Dzogchen, or some varieties of Tibetan Buddhism, make reference to a rainbow body. The pot of gold that the Irish leprechaun keeps hidden is typically stated to be at the end of a rainbow. The rainbow- That's what I was always told was at the end of a rainbow. It's just an optical phenomenon and can't be reached, thus this region is fittingly unreachable, which means you aren't getting your free gold. You'll just have to settle for a bowl of Lucky Charms instead. <laughs> Number 8. Lenticular Clouds what? These lens-shaped orographic wave clouds form when the air is still, and wind blows across hills and mountains from the same or comparable directions, at various heights in the troposphere. It's possible for really strange, unnatural-looking clouds to appear downwind of hills or mountains. Although they're not frequent, they do occasionally arise throughout the British Isles. They're believed to be one of the most common explanations for UFO sightings all around the world, because they mimic the classic shape of a flying saucer. In some circumstances, wind blowing across a mountain range can produce a train of enormous standing waves in the downstream direction, much to how ripples form in a river as water crosses a barrier. The rising velocity of the wave enables water vapor to condense if there's enough moisture in the air, giving- See, seeing some of this stuff, it makes me truly believe. We don't know what this can we don't know all of what this ca this planet is capable of doing. <laughs> like we don't we need to learn more about our planet, bro, and its capabilities cuz it's getting scary. Lenticular clouds their unique appearance. Lenticular clouds are viewed like airborne mountain waves. On the other hand, these waves can appear even in the absence of clouds and outside of cloud cover. They may generate motionless air just a few hundred meters away on the ground, while producing very strong gusts of wind nearby. Pilots of powered aircraft steer clear of lenticular clouds because of the turbulence they induce. On the other hand, glider pilots appreciate them because they can anticipate where the air will ascend depending on the cloud floor. Number 7. Fog Bows. Ghost Rainbows. A fog bow, sometimes known as a white rainbow, is a phenomenon akin to a rainbow. However, as its name implies, it only manifests in fog, as opposed to rain. The fog bow exhibits only very faint hues, with a red outer border and a bluish inner edge, due to the extremely small size of the water droplets that generate fog, smaller than 0.05 millimeters in diameter. The tiny droplets diffraction effect causes the colors to spread out and fade. Fogbows frequently seem white when the droplets are very minute, and are hence sometimes referred to as white rainbows. A fogbow may be distinguished from a glory by its absence of color in addition to its larger angular dimension, since a glory contains many rings of light that are the result of diffraction. The fogbow can contain many inner rings or supernuminaries that are more vibrantly colored than the main bow when the droplets that make it are nearly all the same size. The sun would have to be behind the observer's head and the view would be into a bank of fog, since a fogbow is viewed in the same direction as a rainbow, which may not be noticeable in directions away from the bow itself. It has a somewhat smaller outer radius than a rainbow. Lunar fogbows are fogbows that occur at night. Number 6. Deep Sea Brine Pools a brine pool is a volume of brine gathered in a seabed depression, sometimes known as an undersea, deep water, or brine lake. The pools are large, salty water bodies that are three to eight times saltier than the ocean outside. Ooh. They're frequently discovered under polar sea ice and the deep ocean. These below sea ice are created by a procedure known as brine rejection. Salt's required to raise the salinity gradient in deep sea brine pools. The salt can arise from one of two processes. Geothermically heated brine released from tectonic spreading centers, or the dissolving of substantial salt droplets through salt tectonics. The brine frequently includes high amounts of methane and hydrogen sulfide, which give nearby chemosynthetic organisms energy. These organisms are frequently symbionts and extremophiles. Marine species are threatened by deep sea and polar brine pools because of their high salinity and anoxic 
toxic characteristics, which can ultimately result in toxic shock and potentially death. Despite the challenging environment, macrofauna like bivalves may be found in the narrow zone around the saline pool border. Brine pools with macrofauna have also been observed in the land-sea interface. Sulfur chimneys that are no longer operational have been discovered alongside associated epifauna, like polychaetes and hydroids. Additionally, it's been discovered that brine pools in the Red Sea are home to a variety of animals, including gastropods, cephalid, polychaetes, and topsails. These species generally eat bacteria, debris films, or microbial symbionts. Number 5. Probably everything else that swims over there and dies. Don Juan Pond. Don Juan Pond is just 4 inches deep, giving it the appearance of a thick, salty puddle rather than a true pond. The shallow water is so salt-filled that even when the temperature drops well below zero, it doesn't freeze. Despite the fact that it never freezes, neither the pond nor its surroundings are home to any aquatic life. But you'll probably run into folks. Since it was found in 1961, Don Juan Pond has generated a lot of interest among scientists, especially astrobiologists. The landscape is reminiscent of Mars and is used by researchers to investigate what may be humanity's next frontier, Mars. Scientists in Antarctica have hypothesized that the black streaks on the surrounding rocks are caused by a brine that's seeping downward. Don Juan Pond serves as a terrestrial platform for researchers to investigate water on the red planet since Mars has similar collections of recurrent slope lineages. Don Juan Pond's size and volume changes throughout time. The region was around 0.25 kilometers squared, according to the USGS topographical map that was issued in 1977. However, the pond has significantly decreased in size in recent years. Number 4. Bungle Bungle Range, Australia in the Kimberley area of Western Australia, the Bungle Bungle Range is a significant landform and the park's centerpiece. Sandstones and conglomerates that are used to create towers characteristic beehive shapes, basically rocks composed mainly of pebbles and boulders, and cemented together by finer material. When active faults changed the terrain in 375 to 350 million years ago, the sedimentary layers were deposited into the Red Basin. The domes were sculpted over millions of years by the combined forces of rainfall and wind from the Tanami Desert. On the plains around the eastern Kimberley area, the range may be found. The range are stacks of former seabeds that include dolomite layers all over them. The Piccaninny Crater is a structure that's thought to be the eroded remnants of a very old meteorite impact crater. Differences in the sandstone layers are what generate the odd orange and dark gray banding on the conical rock formations. The darker bands, which are dark agile or canobacterial growths, occur on the rock strata that retain more moisture. Iron Iron and manganese mineral deposits found in the sandstone have discolored the orange colored strata. Number 3. Noctilucent Clouds in the high atmosphere of the Earth, there are hazy cloud-like structures called noctilucent clouds, also called night sparkling clouds. When seen from space, polar mesospheric clouds appear as a diffuse scattering layer of water ice crystals. Don't forget y'all, they, they got a cloud app. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? close to the summer polar mesopause. Only during astronomical twilight are they visible from the ground and are formed of ice crystals. Noctilucent roughly translates to night shining in Latin. In the summer, they're most commonly spotted between the latitudes of 50 degrees and 70 degrees. Since they're too faint to be seen during the day, they can only be seen when the observer and the lower atmosphere are under the shadow cast by the Earth, even if these extremely high clouds are still in the light. More water vapor is produced as the methane molecules enter the mesosphere, which, according to a new study, leads to the development or reinforcement of noctilucent clouds. They reach heights of around 76 to 85 kilometers in the mesosphere, making them the highest clouds in the Earth's atmosphere. Although Thomas Romney Robertson in R. May may have seen them a few decades earlier, there's no verified record of their sighting prior to 1885. Following reports of NLC-like events at high northern latitudes following the Chesilbinsk Super Biolide entry in February 2013, which turned out to be stratospheric dust reflections visible after sunset, Robinson's out-of-season data have come under scrutiny. It doesn't always seem to be simple to identify the type of cloud you're looking at. Number 2. Rio Negro 
The Rio Negro is one of the world's 10 biggest rivers by average flow. The greatest left tributary of the Amazon River, contributing over 14% of the water in the Amazon Basin. And the Still mind blowing to see this. The largest black water river in the world. Francisco del Orellana, a Spanish adventurer, gave the river its name after discovering it in 1541. By the middle of the 17th century, Jesuits had established themselves alongside its banks among the Indian tribes of Manao, Arauc, and Truma. It's crazy. Slavery along the river became widespread around 1700, and Eurasian illnesses brought about a significant decline in Native American populations. In 2003, this place served as the shooting location for Survivor the Amazon. Rio Negro, which translates to Black River, has waters that resemble strong tea, which is typical of Blackwater rivers. Due to insufficient decomposition of phenyl-containing flora from sandy clearings, the black hue is a result of humic acid. The river's name refers to how dark it seems from a distance. Number 1. Rainbow Mountains, China some of the most unusual geologic Whoa. formations in the world may be found in the deserts of Gansu Providence in northwest China. The Zhangyi Danxi National Geopark, a vibrant display of stratified granite hills created over 20... If I was like a painter or artist or something, this would definitely be my muse. 24 million years ago of natural erosion tops the list for originality without a doubt. Mm. The geopark sand and mudstone mountains resemble works of nature sand sculpture. Perfectly straight strips of brilliant color covered the very peaks and valleys of the terrain. It's indeed a breathtaking sight, and we can state with certainty that it's the coolest spot in China. One day, maybe you can experience this breathtaking sight for yourself. Which of these amazing things in nature? See, I know we've been covering space a lot, but I just want to remind people with videos like this, man, that our planet is still fascinating, and there's still a lot of things I have yet to see. So, have to not only pay attention to space, but our very own. All right. So y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what you thought of this video. And uh, until next one, I'm gone. Peace.